Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Installing Zoom on your Chromebook. What tips can I give you and what problems I've seen people have? The first part of this video is going to outline how to install Zoom on your Chromebook. We're then going to look at different types of apps such as progressive web apps, Android apps, and where to find them on your Chromebook. So let's get on with the show. I'm going to put in the outline below timestamps for this so you can move ahead to the sections that you're interested in. So let's have a look how to install Zoom on your Chromebook. So you remember the like and subscribe thing. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see us continue to make more videos like this. So Huey Poplick and I have a show called Tech for Senior on Monday mornings. You can find information about it at www.techforsenior.com. Many of our audience use Chromebooks for uh, communication in the, into our Zoom meeting. And we often get questions about they can't see live transcript, how to turn it on. A lot of the controls are different. It's, it's like people are using different software. How can this all be different, right? Uh, it should all be the same. Well, in fact, people are using different software. Now let me explain where the confusion comes in and what you should do to uh, get the best experience when you're using your Chromebook for a Zoom meeting. I'll show you how to do this. All right, let's log into a Zoom meeting using my uh, Zoom account on a Chromebook. You'll see there are two Zoom buttons at the bottom here. I'm going to use the one on the left. Now, uh, we are going to join a Zoom meeting now, so I'm going to be typing the uh, meeting ID in. Now, as I do this, I want you to familiarize yourself with the, uh, the menu. Uh, is this the one that you were using, and is this the one you're familiar with? It certainly will not be if you're used to a Windows machine. But let's see us logging in now. I'm going to click the don't want video or audio because I'm actually zooming in on another computer in my office here for the meeting. So we're now going to connect. Now remember, I am doing this on my Chromebook and recording the screen. So we're now connecting into the meeting and we're now the host will let us in. So he has and you'll see this is the menu that brings up. And of course, we're not doing audio or visual. Uh, but these are the options we have. We can view settings, and we have some basic settings here. We can look at our audio, look, look at accessibility. We'll X out of that. Uh, we can, in fact, uh, look at the participants. If we click here, you'll see the participants are on the right side. And we can raise our hand. We can invite and uh, come up here we'll see the host and we'll see uh, I'll be the participant this is the the top one is uh, our screen we can share our screen if we want and we can chat now what I want you to do is watch this carefully we can even come up to gallery view and we can change the view here uh, to a couple of a uh, couple of different views but there are a lot of things lacking this does not look like the menu on a Zoom meeting on Windows. For example, you can't trigger live transcription. So this gets a bit confusing now. So let's log out and look at how we might do this again. All right, let's do this again. And we're going to come down onto the shelf and we're going to use the Zoom icon on the right side. We're going to click this and things look a little different now. This does not look like the menu we had just prior. So we come up here and we're going to put in join meeting. We're going to type the meeting number in again. And I want you to watch the menu. It's a completely different menu and app that you're going to see. All right, we're typing it in and let's join. Okay, joining meeting. Host is letting us in. Uh, Wow, things look a little different. Let me just, um, let's just go to full view here. Doesn't that look like Windows? Yes. Here we are. 
Uh, again, I don't have the audio or visual turned on because I don't want conflict between our microphones. But here we have security, participants, polls, share screen, chat, record, live transcription right there, break rooms, reactions, settings, like this. Not, not quite all the features, but pretty much the same as your Windows version now. Yeah, well, you can look at the background. We can even choose backgrounds to put in here. Lots of options for you. As this app looks a lot like the Windows app that you would use using Zoom on Windows 10. We then come to Gallery View, or we can Speaker View. Again, lots of options here, and this menu would look very familiar to you if you were a Windows user. All right, two different apps, two different experiences, eh? And if you look carefully on the shelf, you'll see that those two apps, the icons for them are a bit different, all right? So they are two different apps on my Chromebook. The first one that you saw was an Android app. This is an app that if you went to the web portal on Zoom with your Chromebook logged in, it would probably download that app onto your Chromebook. Also, if you went to the Play Store a while ago, and I'm not exactly sure how far back, you would have found the Android app there and downloaded it and put it on your Chromebook. All right. However, things have changed. In this past year, we have what we call a progressive web app. This is now what we use on your Chromebook. And that was the second one that I showed you. And it was almost exactly the same as the uh, Windows Zoom app. And that is why we had this confusion on our Monday show when people are saying, no, I can't see live transcription. I don't see any of that. And other people are saying, yeah, I see it. It's all there. So what that's, this solves the confusion. There's two different apps and people have two different um, apps on their Chromebook. So I want to show you now how to download the progressive web app for your Chromebook. It's, it's really simple now and I'm just going to show you how to do it. We're going to talk about what exactly is a progressive web app a little bit later, but let me just get to this and show you how it's done now. All right, I'm on my Chromebook now. And let's come down on the lower left side to the launcher. Okay, we're going to click this. And we're going to come up, and you'll see right away it says here, Play Store. So let's go to the Play Store. This is where we're going to download our, uh, our apps for our Chromebook. So uh, up here in the search, we're going to type in Zoom. And we're going to hit Enter. And what's going to happen is, is this is going to search the whole Play Store for, um, for the Zoom app. And what you're not going to see is the old apps. And we'll talk a bit about this later. But here you'll see I have installed on this Chromebook Zoom for Chrome. And it is a PWA. And this should be the only one that you see when you go now to the, um, to the Play Store. There'll be no other apps. This is the one that you want to install on your Chromebook. Please resume, remove any other Zoom apps on your Chromebook and install this. And then you will have the menu system that we had in the second app that I showed you. Now, if you don't see the Play Store on your um, launcher menu, you may not have enabled it. Let's come down over to on the right hand side and let's go to our settings menu. We're going to click settings and I, then I want you to come down the list here until we come to apps. And you'll see here uh, Google Play Store. Now I of course have mine enabled you may not have this enabled and this is this you'll see this um, as a, as a toggle switch that will want you to enable it 
if Chromebooks are often used in schools, so it is very common that administrators don't want students downloading apps onto their school Chromebook. So that option can be turned off. So if you can't find the Play Store, then you should come down here and see if it's uh, not enabled. That's most likely the cause. All right, I've been using Chromebooks for the past, oh, I guess about 12 years. My very first Chromebook, I was so excited when in 2016, Google announced that the Android Play Store was coming to Chromebooks. Because before that, we just had the Web Store. You'll find it still available on the, your Chromebook, but of course it's uh, slowly going to be phased out. We were so excited about the Play Store coming to our Chromebook in 2016, it was a big deal. What happened in 2016 was interesting, as all the Android apps suddenly were available for our Chromebook. Well, there were some hiccups with this. And part of the problem were a lot of the Android apps had been developed for smartphones. And of course, the viewing size was totally different and not meant for a large screen. So where there was a confusing period where some of the apps <clears throat> that you downloaded didn't really work that well. And that was in 2016. Now what's happened as the Chromebooks have matured is that things have got a little bit clearer. You may take your Android smartphone and find some apps that you really like on it. And you think, oh gosh, I'm going to download those onto my Chromebook. You then go to the Play Store on your Chromebook and you can't find them. So what has happened now is that Google only shows you on your Chromebook apps that will actually work. Now this is a huge advantage to Chromebooks. So we'll talk about this a bit later. So in the last year, we've developed a new type of app and that is called a progressive web app or PWA. Here's the problem. If you're a developer and you're making an app, you have to make it for a Chromebook you have to make it for an Android device, you have to make it for a Mac device, an iOS device, and a Linux device. Wouldn't it be nice if we just had one app that would work on any everything? And that really is what a progressive web app is. And that's what we just saw with Zoom. We saw the old Android app performing against the new progressive web app for Zoom on a Chromebook. And it's just getting better. And that's why we need to replace those old apps with new ones that are PWAs. And you'll see this coming a lot in the future. And I'm gonna give you a couple of other examples of this. Now in closing, I just wanted to say you are so lucky to have a Chromebook. They offer some big advantages over a traditional PC. Let me explain this. Let's take Google Photos, for example. On a Windows 10 machine, you access Google Photos through your browser. Your browser with Google Photos has some significant limitations. Really, where the power is, is in the app on your phone. The Google Photos app has much more functionality than looking at the web browser version. But you know, on your Chromebook, you can do it both ways. You have the distinct advantage of being able to see it either as a browser base or as having your Android app on your Chromebook. And so you have this really big advantage here. The other is, of course, Google Drive. You can view Google Drive with the Google app or you can use it from the web. You also have options such as Snapchat. Snapchat is a very advanced uh, photo editing tool which is free and available, but it's only available as an Android app. Well, guess what? You can put Snapseed on your Chromebook because, of course, it is an Android app. And this allows the advantage of not just editing pictures on a small screen, but you can now do it on a large um, screen on your Chromebook. Yes. So now I'm just going to show you on my Chromebook just how this might look. I've now logged into my Chromebook. And at the bottom of, the, um, of my Chromebook on the shelf, you'll see two sets of apps. Let's look at the Google Photo first. 
In the Google Photo app, you're going to see um, the Google Photo icon with a little white dot below it. The next one is going to have the Google Photo icon with a little blue dot on the top. So what's the difference? Let's have a look. Let's go to the first one. I'm going to click on this and watch what happens. This of course loads Google Photos web version. This is what you'd be seeing on a Windows 10 PC. Now we can tell that that's true because at the top here you'll see that we are at photos.google.com. So this is the web version and we can see that on a Chromebook. So as I've said before, it, it works much better if you're in an Android in the Android app. It's much more functional. So let's come over to the bottom here and let's click this little icon here. And this brings up the Android app that you would see on your phone. And if you come up here, you'll see, of course, there is no URL because we're in the Android app. Isn't that cool? So now we have the best of both worlds. We can either look at it through the web browser, like, like Windows 10 people do, but we have the added advantages of having the same app on our Chromebook that you would on your phone and giving you much more functionality. Pretty cool, eh? Now if we come over, you'll see the next two will of course be Google Drive and, uh, and of course Google Drive with the icon here. Uh, I'm not going to open these up for privacy reasons. I have a lot of personal information on there. But again, if you clicked on the first one, you would of course see this as, a, uh, as the web version. And the second one here would be with the Google Drive app. So a Chromebook gives you incredible versatility. <laughs> well, it's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Zoom on a Chromebook. Till we meet again, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until we meet again, have a great day.